Good evening and welcome to the annual meeting for the Waltham Land Trust. My name is Nadine Stein. I'm the president of the board of directors and I'm really excited to have you guys here. Um, we're virtual tonight and we have a really great program ahead. I'm sure that you'll find it interesting and enlightening. Um, our first person that I would like to, oh, before I go any further, I almost forgot, sorry. Um, we're not using the chat feature tonight. So if you have any questions or comments, we ask that you put it in the Q&A feature, please. And um, again, no chat, it's Q&A for tonight. Um, and at this point, I would like to hand it over to our wonderful executive director, Sonia Wadman. Thanks. Um, is there a screen that, are we showing the agenda? Or are we going right into, I'm afraid I don't see the presentation. Excuse me, uh, it's my fault. I will have it in a second. Wonderful. Really happy that so many people are here with us tonight. I wish that we were in person, of course. Hopefully next year we can get together and be in person. So me and, and Hudi can uh, welcome everybody and thank you all for supporting the Land Trust and our mission of creating a legacy of land conservation in Waltham. Do you see it yet? I do not. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I practiced everybody else, but not me. <laughs> no problem. So I'm sure many of you know that we have some good things coming up, including our year-end appeal, which will be starting, um, and it's coinciding, kicking off with Giving Tuesday which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So that'll be on November 30th. And we do hope that you'll be able to make a donation to us on that day online, or you can mail a check with November 30th and the date, or you can just mail us a check or make a donation at any time before January 1st. And here we are at our annual meeting. This is our 22nd anniversary, and we're so glad that everyone could be with us. Next slide. Um, why don't we go back the, to the, okay. I was just gonna say, should we look at the agenda real briefly? No, yeah, here. Why don't we do that? So Nadine shared her brief opening comments and I will be presenting the Inge Euler Environmentalist of the Year Award next. <clears throat> then we'll be hearing from Jarek Reiner about the Word Avenue project. And then Betty McKenzie will talk, tell us all about her projects at Hardy Pond and the Wellington property. Then the um, Land Trust Director Brian McCormick will give us a synopsis of our financial status. And then our Vice President Barbara Jacobs will lead the um, uh, members in voting on our returning directors. And then we'll have a quick update on some issues that are have been of concern to the land trust and we will take your questions. And I definitely encourage you to submit questions. Um, I we would love to hear what are on what's on your minds and what you're concerned about what you think we should get involved with <clears throat> and all those other things. So I think we can advance to the next slide. Awesome. So our Inge Euler Environmentalist of the Year Award is something that's a you know, very important award. <laughs> it happens every year. And it was named in 2011, I believe. Um, I think we're going to the next slide. Yes, Inge Euler was one of our founding directors. And in 2011, she retired from the board. Inge is amazing. If any of you ever met her, you would agree with me. And um, her positivity and excitement for saving land was just infectious. And she knew, knew so much and she still does. Inge is still with us. She actually celebrated her 90th birthday uh, recently at her home in Weston. Um, so we're really happy that Inge's still around. We love her and we honor her by naming this Environmentalist of the Year Award after her. So it's not necessarily the volunteer of the year. It's not, you know, it, um, it's really someone who's making a huge impact in our environment. So oftentimes that is the, the volunteer of the year. Oftentimes it's our stewards, as you'll see at the beginning of our list of previous recipients include 
founding steward, Bob Jetstrom, who also was the leader of our chainsaw team forever. Of course, Laurel Carpenter, you guys can't be on the trails or along the MCRT without running into Laurel. Uh, she's a huge, huge, huge steward of ours, involved with a lot of projects, including the Mass Central Rail Trail. Emily Suspect is also someone you'll always see along the river um, with her camera and with her vest. And she's at all of our events too. Emily is an amazing steward, amazing volunteer, um, amazing environmentalist of the year from our past. As is Dave Hutchinson, who also was a volunteer along the MCRT. Dave is from Weston, so he gets extra shout outs because we really appreciate him spending so much time in Waltham. Betty McKenzie, Okay, so Betty would get this award, seriously, pretty much every year. She is amazing. You all will find out about the projects she's leading <clears throat> at um, the Wellington House and in the Hardy Pond watershed. So Betty's amazing. But like I said, um, sometimes we recognize people who aren't stewards, like Councillor George Darcy, who won the award a couple of years ago. Uh, George is the founding director of the Land Trust. And in his role as a councillor, he was responsible for changing the zoning determination for several parcels in Waltham to conservation recreation, therefore giving those parcels extra protection. And then of course, Dee Cricker was, is an awesome woman who got our Environmentalist of the Year Award a couple of years ago for her never ending work to save the Waltham Field Station at 240 Beaver Street. Um, and Dee just was, is all over that um, process. So these have been our, pre our previous recipients, but this year we are gonna return to a steward, to recognizing a volunteer who has spent a great deal amount of time leading one of our projects. Um, and I think we can go to the next slide and say that it is going to be um, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> the excitement oh. builds. Oh. Ah, ah, there it was. It is going back. Oh, gosh. Um, no worries. Everyone hold take on. deep breaths. Hold on a second. Sorry. No problem. So I know what was in some of those slides. I'll say this person started getting involved with the Waltham Land Trust in 2019. In 2020, right away, um, he emailed me and told me how he has knowledge of native plants and experience and wanted to share his knowledge and experience with us and with um, some you know, great projects happening in Waltham. So he volunteered at Hardy Ponds and here he is, Mr. Jarek Reiner. I know the crowd is going wild right now. Yay, Jerry! And there he is, but he's not gonna talk yet because I'm gonna um, say a little few more <laughs> words about him. <clears throat> Next slide, there we go. So yeah, so he started hanging out with us in 2019, came to Steward 2020, and Jarek right away reached out to me and said, I would love to be involved with doing some restoration um, he started working on his own along the Charles River near Shaw's, actually, um, because, wow, <laughs> there is a site with lots of invasives, um, especially the knotweed, which Jarek by himself tackled like every weekend. Um, and he just worked away, worked away. Um, coincidentally, at the same time, Alessio Baggio, our awesome Eagle, Eagle Scout, reached out and had asked about doing a restoration project over in the Shaw's area. So I kind of put them together, but Jarek through his amazing research determined that the ownership of the parcels was complicated. And it wasn't like DCR owned the whole property. There was a private property owner and blah, blah, blah. So Alessio did his project over um, on the other side and Jarek, then we learned about this project that would become the Word Woods project. And Jarek was the first one right away to volunteer to be the leader, which I love. I love when people volunteer to lead things and I can step back and Jarek 100% did this. So, um, and he executed this plan with lots of volunteers and he has helped us write several grant proposals. So let's look at some more photos. So this is Jarek 
um, leading the planting effort right here as well, September 18th. And we have more photos of Jarek and his work coming up right now. But um, I guess I'll, <clears throat> I will be quiet <laughs> and say, Jarek, thank you. And I oh, forgot almost the most important thing. Ta-da, wow. here is your fancy award. This is Waltham Land Trust celebrates Jarek Reiner as a 2021 Inge Euler Environmentalist of the Year. Thank you for leading the Native Wetlands Plant Restoration Project at Word Woods along the Charles River. We appreciate your desire to enhance our environment. Yay, and that's signed by our president, Nadine B. Stein. Okay. Jarek, I'm gonna stop sharing and you can bring up your slide. Okay. So I just wanna say thank you so much. <laughs> I'm very taken aback by the award um, and very flattered. And so, um, you know, environmentalism has been especially on my mind the last few years. And so finding any way I could get myself out there, um, especially since I don't really have a degree or background in this stuff, um, getting involved with the land trust and other organizations has always been a big passion of mine. So thank you so much. Like I'm, I'm, I'm speechless to be honest. <laughs> okay. Let me, now I got to focus on the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about the Charles River Reservation uh, Improvement Project known as Word Woods, as was hinted on in the, the last conversation. This was a project that was done between April and September of this year. And so what is Word Woods? And I'm actually gonna just minimize the screen so I can see my slides. Okay, um, so this area is between the Watch Factory and the Word Avenue boat launch. And it's a 2.5 acre parcel of land that is utilized for bicyclists and pedestrians. It's a major part of the Charles River bike and pedestrian path. And it's also an important place for wildlife such as hawks and woodpeckers and other animals for hunting and foraging. Oops. Oh, sorry. So how did this project get started? So first, Grow Native Massachusetts, who is another nonprofit organization, they chose the area as a site for the ecology challenge. And they contacted us as um, a, a possibility of bringing in a volunteer effort to maintain a demonstration garden that they were looking to plant in, in the woodland itself. So we would be maintaining the project after the installation. And around this time, we had uh, an opportunity for grant funding that was identified. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to link up with Grow Native to be able to help each other out and also to maximize the restoration activities in this zone. So between January and March, we met with Grow Native, Parterre, DCR, all uh, as a way of conducting like a site survey of the area and sharing ideas and figuring out a way forward. So the grant that was, um, that we did a proposal for and was eventually awarded was the NEF grant, which was a grant uh, specifically targeted for impacts of COVID-19. And so we looked at the increased use of trails during this time because of the shutdown and also the restrictions around the number of cleanups and people who could actually go out and volunteer. And so what we what we decided to propose was we were going to come up with a uh, land management plan. We hired Parterre to prepare this land management plan, a three-year project, uh, or at least it would look three years out as to the projects that, that we would be doing. And we would be gathering volunteers to do invasive removal and cleanup events, and eventually planting a demonstration garden of our own. And so the full amount, uh, it came out to be about, it came out to be $2,500. So the targets of the land management plan was to look at native plant communities that already exist in the area to uh, describe measures for invasive species control and to recommend plants that could be used to best restore the forest. And as I said, it's a three year plan. So it's, it's looking at how we can meet these targets uh, within this time frame, kind of a best case scenario, but a good way to kind of look at what activities could be done over five, a five to 10 year period. 
uh, Parterre identified uh, four different zones, uh, zone A being kind of the healthiest part of the forest. This is the area with the, the most kind of existing native plant canopy and understory. And B, C, and D being areas that were hit hard by different types of invasives, such as Norway maples, buckthorn, multiflora rose, Japanese knotweed. So the, the plan, kind of the, the targeted plan going forward is to protect this healthy area in part in uh, zone A, uh, control areas like, or advance into areas like B, which kind of has a mix of natives and invasives that are threatening those native populations, and to keep areas like C and D under control so that those invasives won't spread themselves into the healthy parts of the forest. So between April and May, we uh, mostly focused on Earth Day as our priority for cleanups. We had uh, volunteers cleaning up litter on April 22nd, and on May 1st, we targeted garlic mustard, and we did our first knotweed cut. So you can see some of the volunteers here, Nawe, Lois, others uh, cleaning up litter, and you can see all the bags of trash that we cleaned up in just one volunteer effort. Between May and June, we continued kind of going through this area and cutting knotweed. Um, and then we did a second cut of knotweed because after we did our first cut, things kind of grew again. And knotweed is one that you target within three stages. On National Trails Day, we uh, mulched the demonstration garden. We did a, a technique called sheet mulching, which is a cardboard and uh, putting mulch on top. And that helps suppress any sort of weed species kind of coming in and allows you to uh, bring in native plants and uh, you know, minimize sort of those uh, types of impacts. So you can see us here uh, installing the sheet mulching and uh, finally kind of taking a group photo. Between June and August, uh, we worked our way over to zone D and we focused on zone B as well. We cut a lot of the Norway, Norway maple saplings in zone D. We completed our mulching, kind of stacked up the mulch so that there would be uh, a lot, it would make it a lot easier for planting. And we removed a lot of buckthorn that was in zone B and a lot of the invasives that were pressuring that area. And then finally in August, we did our final knotweed cut before uh, things going to seed and kind of ended those activities, uh, at least the invasives activities for most of the season. So you can see our volunteers here. So for this demonstration garden, um, because we were planting later in the season, so our, our installation wasn't until September, uh, much of the native plants that were available were very limited. And it, not only was it limited because late in the season, but also because COVID kind of impacted the industry and made it a lot uh, more difficult for suppliers to kind of keep up with the demand. So we sourced our plants from New England wetland, plant, New England wetland plants out in South Hadley, which is a two hour drive, and uh, kind of selected plants that would not only fit well in a wetland environment, but could also have some drought tolerance depending on what conditions would look like in a disturbed forest. This is the design uh, split into three different areas. Uh, a is a wetland meadow with some of the taller plants and B kind of being sort of a um, woodland edge kind of understory, blueberries, uh, fall wildflowers, uh, very kind of more low growing type plants uh, that could potentially spread. And zone C being a ground cover that's a little bit more formal and kind of transitions into this sort of woody uh, or, or this uh, wetland kind of meadow. So this is the installation on September 18th. Um, we had 10 volunteers complete this action in uh, less than two hours, which I was very impressed by. We planted 400 plugs, which is about eight trays of plants and 31 gallon containers. So um, the, the watering that we did at the end of it and the heavy rain that kind of came in really helped establish these plants early on and made it a lot easier for us to maintain these plants until the, uh, the end of the season. So here's some more pictures of us doing the installation. And this is the, the final garden.
So right now everything is kind of died back, but in the spring things will be coming up. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what things will look like uh, come next spring. So this is just kind of a summary of the project. We did 145 hours of volunteer service, 15 bags of trash removed, 55 bags of invasives. Uh, the woody plants in terms of bags, uh, we did uh, cut up and microchip woody plants. So we made an estimate on the amount of woody plants that were moved and the plants that were put into the native garden. So just uh, what's ahead for next year is we're gonna continue utilizing the land management plan to continue some regular events for removing invasives and invasive control. Uh, some general garden maintenance will be needed for the area. So some weeding, maybe some watering during uh, dry areas, and then maybe just some light pruning. And we're gonna be working to you know, continue with stakeholders and maybe get some funding for future activities. So I'd just like to thank everyone. Uh, we highlighted uh, as many people as we could on this list. If we missed anybody, we are sorry, but uh, I just wanna thank everyone that uh, came out to volunteer, everyone who helped with grants, um, you know, everyone who really made this possible because uh, the people who put in kind of the on the ground effort, uh, it definitely is something that was very much appreciated. And that's all I have. That's great, Jarek. Thanks so much for uh, sharing that project. And it was wonderful um, to see those pictures and relive the transition from April to just a few weeks ago. And we strongly encourage you all to go down and check out the Word Woods um, on your own. You can get there by going like Crescent Street and then Word Avenue. Um, and you can either like come to Crescent Street by coming on Prospect from Main Street or um, up Moody Street and then on Crescent, uh, or if you're coming from the South, Yep, that's also Moody to Crescent. So do check out the, the Word Woods and that awesome project that Eric so spectacularly led. Now we're going to hear, <clears throat> excuse me, from Ms. Betty McKenzie, who is again, an amazing volunteer. Can't, we can't do like a fraction of what we do without Betty's help. Um, she's just amazing. Um, so Betty was the person who was in charge more or less entirely more um, at Hardy Pond and at Wellington. So she's going to now take control, I think, or Betty is going to talk about the projects in the Hardy Pond watershed. And Actually, then after that, she'll talk about the Wellington. Just a second. Um, there's just one, I, I'm getting a res response that somebody's raising their hand and I wanna make sure there's not a problem. So um, can we do that for just a sec? Robert, what is the... Uh, issue? I've asked, I've unmuted you, I believe. Let's oh, hope no. there's no longer an issue. Maybe it got solved. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that may be. Uh, so let me just uh, uh, get this remove spotlight and get Betty back. Um, hmm. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I've, I've mis misplaced Betty for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, come back. I'm on screen sharing if that's uh, okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. You weren't showing up for a minute. Okay, go ahead, Betty. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay, well, uh, wow, Jarek, I am blown away, uh, and uh, I've been just a little involved, but really it's incredible, uh, and congratulations, well-deserved on uh, all of your work, um, so I look forward to helping next year. Um, well, we're going to talk a bit about uh, Hardy Pond and the stewardship work that has gone on there actually over the last couple of years, uh, but whoops. I wanna check, can everyone see the map of Hardy Pond, the first page of the PowerPoint? Oh, good, good, okay. Uh, all right. Let's see, um, okay. Let me see if this gets us to the, there we go, okay. So uh, 
this is Hardy Pond. I'm, I'm sure most people have visited, uh, visited it, uh, usually accessed from Lake Street. Uh, and it is one of the truly remarkable places in Waltham. Um, and uh, I'm gonna tell you a little about what stewards have done uh, to really uh, enable people to visit uh, and really to fight back the invasives that uh, you heard being mentioned by Jarek uh, and, uh, and begin to plant native plants. On this map here, you see a little blue, uh, sort of like explosion stars. And, uh, and those indicate the various areas where stewards have worked uh, at Hardy Pond. Um, and I do want to thank, by the way, I want to thank uh, Sandy Anagnostakis, uh, one of our land trust members, uh, because without her help, by the way, you all would have gotten crayon drawings or something like that uh, for this presentation. Um, so those are some of the areas where we've been working, uh, the north in Graverson Park, uh, both the rain garden uh, and uh, around the park, uh, the Hardy Pond Conservation Area, which I'm sure people have heard about before, uh, which uh, the Community Preservation Committee funded and, and George Darcy and the Land Trust put forward as a proposal that is now near completion on the west side of the pond. Uh, Smith Point, the, the small piece of land that uh, the Land Trust owns there uh, right on Hardy Pond. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the areas further south, the end of Shore Road and the pathway uh, to Lakeview Ave and Lazazro Park. For those who didn't know, there is a new path that goes around the pond. And so uh, that connects up many of the areas where we've been working and you can see that on the green line uh, there. Um, so here are some of the folks who've contributed over the last couple of years. Uh, people have done all kinds of things uh, from uh, picking up trash and clearing trails to, uh, to digging and, and cutting and uh, mulching and hauling, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So really it's been quite a team effort and uh, really couldn't uh, thank people more for, for all of their help. It's pretty fun uh, and pretty enjoyable. I don't know if you can see in that left-hand top picture, but that's the pond behind us. Now, many times we're, we're out working and uh, working hard, and, and yet we're there with other, other pond wildlife, beautiful, uh, beautiful skyscapes and, and things going on. So it's really a lot of fun as well as a lot of, uh, a lot of work. Um, and this is really, in particular, the Hardy Pond Project is really about neighborhood folks who are helping take care of this, this environment uh, uh, for all of us to enjoy and for the health of the pond. Um, here are some of the uh, invasives before they've been tamed. Uh, and I want to point out two things. Uh, there's uh, Bob uh, Premac uh, taking on the knotweed in the Seminole Woods. Uh, you can't quite tell. You can tell it's a lot, but basically that's about 200 feet of Japanese knotwood and um, knotweed, and it's about 15 or 20 feet wide. And the question was, could we could we emulate what Parterre had suggested for Ward Woods? and cut it down and, and keep it from flowering. So we, uh, we did manage to do that. And, and we have six or seven areas around the pond that, that need control uh, because the knotweed keeps other trees and things from growing and really creates a lot of invasion, um, erosion problems for the pond and the waterways. Uh, below you see the bittersweet at the side of Graverson. And I wanna tell you, if you, I'm, everyone has probably dealt with bittersweet, but this has been cut back, this little section, at least three times in the last three years. And really, uh, to be able to get ahead of the invasives, I think in a few areas, we're going to need more, uh, more tools in the toolbox to be able to uh, fight this kind of problem. Here we're still at, uh, we're at Graverson uh, and you see Sandy, uh, doc, sometimes known as Dr. Chestnut by people in this neighborhood, uh, pruning one of the service berries. 
and Kathy Maluli putting mulch around. Uh, we really couldn't do uh, a lot of our work without the help of the CPW and the rec department. And we know they're really busy, but uh, it really makes a huge difference when they're able to jump in and help. And uh, in the case of the parks, especially, you know, facilitating things one way or another or uh, providing mulch and uh, providing wheelbarrows and help. Um, and uh, one other thing I want to mention here, um, you know, this area was planted with natives and uh, I think some of us even first getting into learning about native plants thought, oh, great planted natives, check that off the list, move on to the next project. And that is not how it works. Uh, we really have learned that even in areas that were nicely planted like Graverson, uh, it takes time for the native plant community to develop and to come in. And uh, until it's a robust, strong and, and thick community, the invasives still have quite a bit of an edge. So we've been in there regularly pulling up seedlings and so forth uh, in different areas. And that's what our land trust steward is doing there on the right-hand side. Here we see some more happy mulchers. Uh, and this is of course at Lazazaro. Here's the pollinator garden uh, going in up by Lake Road. This was the the brainstorm of Phil, Phil Moser, uh, and I think uh, some of us wondered, could this really work? It worked. It, it worked big time. You know, uh, Phil was uh, was positive and optimistic, and and the flowers, uh, being the resilient and tough things they are, came through. So we are now at the point of beginning to move some of these to other areas. So it's it's and gotten a lot of comments, by the way, from people who see this. Again, just what was hoped, uh, educating people about what is going on uh, in the park and, and with native plants. Here we're at Smith Point. Um, and if you haven't visited, uh, I highly recommend it. It's really just a beautiful spot and, and you can do some really nice birding. Uh, people probably know that Tyler Mailman uh, of Troop 250, Scout Troop 250 uh, did a project to rebuild the trail and to add a boardwalk. So here they are working on the boardwalk and this was all finished last fall. And then we've got Fran here. How, can you, you know, can you imagine how happy she looks with all of these native plants? So uh, this hadn't quite been on my radar, but Sonia suggested adding more plants and, and said we had a bit of a budget for it. And so we did add quite a few, uh, even though it's a fairly robust native plant community. But one thing to keep in mind is that even in areas that have a lot of natives, the more different types we can add, the stronger the environment is going to be. So all of that is uh, all of that is to the better, um, and uh, we will continue to add more native plants where we can. Here we have Shore Road, uh, various characters who you've seen before and others not. Uh, and this was another area that was just a complete jungle a few years ago and uh, really got cleaned out in a neighborhood cleanup run by the Hardy Pond uh, uh, Coordinating Committee. Um, and we had many people helping and got tons of invasives out. And, and then that made room for adding the natives back. Here we have a view of the Hardy Pond Conservation Area. Uh, people may have read in the Land Trust newsletter that there was a major project uh, with uh, replacing urban fill in the area on the left-hand photo, the area kind of above and behind the bridge was all woods and invasives. Uh, and that got removed uh, for flood, it's more complicated, but we'll say flood control reasons. And that's being replanted with native plants. Um, we see a steward here attacking a bittersweet vine, uh, which has pulled down trees in various areas, the bittersweet. So we've pulled out countless bags of that over the last couple of years. And down the middle uh, in this lower slide, you see the uh, a, a kind of a, a boardwalk, an informal boardwalk, and a lot of water. Um, this area gets quite a bit of stormwater and uh, looking to the future, uh, you can see there's, there's again, some more tools that are needed to help the environment here. 
uh, and also to make it easier for people to use uh, a bridge across the stream. And, uh, you know, something to try and uh, maybe a series of uh, retaining ponds that really slow down the water that, that trap the pollutants and the sediment to keep them all from going into Hardy Pond. All of this contributes to making Hardy Pond much healthier uh, long term and uh, better for wildlife and more resilient. Here we are, uh, having controlled the invasives in any number of these areas much better. We're at the point where we can begin to add these natives back and, and tend them. Uh, and that's both in the form of plants. These were thinned plants from the pollinator garden on the left. And uh, on the right, you see some white swamp oak seeds. Um, and those uh, have been planted and are sitting in the hardy pond tree nursery, which is in uh, Sandy's uh, garage. And we hope to add more, uh, we hope to add more trees uh, to that collection. Here's some flowers. These are all native flowers around the pond with the exception of the trumpet honeysuckle that is in my backyard. And uh, there's a little plug for more trumpet honeysuckle around the pond. Uh, and then there we are at Smith Point. Um, so there is, there is Hardy Pond. Uh, stewards this year spent about 250 hours. Uh, really, it's amazing when you're working every week how fast it, how fast it adds up. So it's really, a, it's really dramatically different than it was a couple of years ago with all that's gone on. So we're excited and uh, join us. Join us or take a walk around the pond. Now we shall move to the, how do we get to the other slideshow. Uh-oh, screen sharing has stopped. Hmm. Share again and, and bring up the other presentation. Yes, one sec. One sec, folks, while I pull up the other presentation. Let's hmm. I've got it. I'm just going to screen sharing. Okay, do we have it? Can everyone see it? Okay. Yep. And this is the um, Wellington House. Um, and uh, this is, um, and the fields are there on the right. This is a slightly different type of project. Um, really, uh, this is, this is a, an all Waltham project. And uh, even we get folks from Lexington and elsewhere. Uh, the, uh, th there's, there's many people and um, uh, entities who've been involved and pushed this project forward. And I, I really can't thank them all. I'll just, the historical commission who drafted a stewardship plan, George Darcy and the rec, uh, the recreation department who've really been championing this work of late um, and, uh, and Sonia who actually stepped up as we began to get involved in this and, and really provided just uh, immeasurable support. So those are a few of our uh, favorite fans and folks who have pushed this forward. But in July of this year, when we realized we didn't have enough funding to do a few things, uh, uh, we said, what can the volunteers do? And particularly, we're looking at this area on the right-hand side, which is about five and a half to six acres of fields. Here we have a picture of that uh, after it's been cleared, so cleared with the CPC funds. And uh, Eleanor and, and Therese Ricky, keep an eye on us. Therese has helped several times. Uh, and uh, Eleanor says, uh, keep up the good work. So she is thrilled uh, and, and I can't wait to uh, interview her. I don't know if anyone else is interested in that but I really wanna know her experience uh, with farming there. Um, and this is before the one of the clearings, you can begin to see how uh, a little out of control it was. Uh, and this is in July when we said, can we do this? Can we make paths on our own? And George laid out 
paths for a third of a mile circuit around the uh, around this, uh, and uh, you can see people beginning to do it. And I want to tell you, I've done a lot of types of stewardship work before. Making paths is on the more difficult side, using shovels and pickaxes, and and you know you get a few inches and you got to go more. So. That was a little bit of a surprise, but but we spent several different workdays working on that. Um, I'm going to move to this for just one minute and then go back. Uh, here you see the completed paths, uh, paths going around, paths in the middle. We think they'll be ready next spring for walking. Uh, the grass has really come up quite well, a low grow fescue that Dr. Sandy uh, picked. However, uh, the turkeys didn't want to wait. Um, so they jumped right in and uh, fortunately they don't seem to like some of the seed that we're using. Um, but uh, it came out stunning, stunningly well, frankly. I, I think we were we all shocked ourselves uh, and you know just gazillions of people who are helping with this. Um, actually, I'm going to take a minute because I did want to thank, we had uh, uh, more than 60 people help with this project from July through November. And uh, there are several folks who spent really between 10 and 40 hours helping with this project. Uh, and, and in particular, I wanna thank Bob Premack, George Darcy, Kristen Marbritt Moriton, Courtney Lee Cox, Van Morrill, Vida Poole, uh, Leonid uh, and Shake and Sandy and Dr. Sandy, uh, all spent just gazillions of amounts of time uh, making this happen. Here we get to the fun part. Who knew that seeding could be fun? After the fields had been cleared a second time, uh, we were seeding this uh, here with uh, annual rye uh, that will die back over the winter, but protect the soil and really develops a vigorous root system and uh, also helps protect the soil. And you see Ranger Adam there cutting, he's not cutting that tree down by the way, he's cutting a branch on the ground. But Adam uh, has, has been helping at any number of points. He's our key contact with the recreation department and has been um, just amazingly supportive and offered uh, critical help. Here's a little picture of what things look like beforehand. This is the type of area which in the future could be uh, an orchard. Uh, here's some of the work, uh, you know, having cleared out areas of the invasives and just, just really quite a bit of dead branches on the ground and tree trunks. These all went through the chipper this past weekend. Um, the other incredible thing about uh, Wellington, if you haven't been there, are the stone walls. And they pretty much looked like uh, what you see Marie clearing here. Uh, and we have in this area and in other areas uh, removed the vines and so forth, and we'll need to stay on that to, uh, so we can see them. And at some point these will, uh, these will get restored. Um, after, uh, after we take a breather, uh, uh, you know, our last big work day is this coming Saturday from um, one to four. Uh, the rec department uh, is really asking us and we really have to, to say, what could this place be? What does the neighborhood want? Um, there is a draft plan that's been around for five years, the uh, stewardship plan, which is online and people can look at it. Uh, and uh, at this point, the recreation department has the care and control of this property of the fields. The house is, is managed by the, uh, the Waltham Historical Commission. So the fields, uh, the rec department wants to know what we would like and, and they will look at it and, and they wanna hear goals and so forth. And really, you know, we're not talking about the next year or so, we're looking at what could this be? It's kind of a, once in a lifetime type of opportunity, what could this really gorgeous, unbelievable place be to help reconnect people with history, to help people reconnect with nature? Um, and, uh, you know, we'll pull people together in January to talk about the ideas and uh, 
see what we come up with and propose it to the rec board. I know George has been working on lots of different things. Uh, so it'd be all part of part of that discussion. Um, and, you know, planning is good. Goals are good. Um, we need, you know, people are saying, where, where are we going? What is this going to be? And that here we have our last couple of shots. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I just, you know, would love to go there and just sit as opposed to have projects in mind. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, <laughs> to give, taking that opportunity. Um, let me see, I think I, I, I did wanna thank all these people, which I think I thank CPC for sure, because they put up $50,000 to get this in motion. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really been a team effort. And I, I have been really amazed, as I said earlier, by Sonia's uh, really just immediate support for you know one more thing on her plate and another project. But uh, it's a magical place. And uh, I, I invite people to check it out and visit and, and think about what could be. Thank you. Thank you, techies. Thank you, everybody, for listening and uh, caring about these stewardship activities. Thank you, Betty. And while we're sharing thank yous, I am going to read. Um, Ranger Adam Green was planning on making the meeting tonight, but he was a, he's unable to join us, but he did want to extend, and I'm going to read from his thing. I did want to extend my gratitude to all the stewards and volunteers that have contributed in Waltham. It's been a pleasure getting to know everyone and seeing their amazing work and dedication. I can speak for the entire recreation department and saying thank you for the hard work and sacrifice of the Waltham Land Trust and its members. It does not go unnoticed. So that's very nice. Um, Adam is just a great guy and we have really appreciated him being able to come and uh, assist Betty and the team at Wellington. And I gotta say, any, any activity that involves a chipper is a lot of fun. So I believe the chipper might be there again this Saturday, which as Betty said, is our very last um, work day. So if you wanna see the chipper in action and help pull some logs around, um, then please come to the Wellington House at 1 p.m. They're gonna wrap it up at four and it's gonna be a great project. So I am trying to remember what's happening next. I think it is, if I look at my agenda, uh, oh, well, here we go. It's a commercial break. So thank you. Take it away, Leslie. Hello, everybody. Um, how would you like to take a walk in the park? Prospect Hill Park to be specific. Now you can learn more about this park if you take the new field guide with you. I wrote this guide remembering how I saw nature when I was starting out. I love nature to this day, but my enthusiasm at the time was, was not matched by any knowledge at all. All I saw was a jumble of tree trunks and rocks and leaves, pretty much a wall of green. I think that if I had had a book like this, it would have made learning much easier by breaking it into manageable chunks. This book gives you a bit of context to help you understand. What you <clears throat> it contains descriptions of 16 natural plant groupings, which we call plant communities. There are over 200 photos of plants and some animals that depend on them. And there are also maps of each plant community with the trails marked so you'll be able to find them. This book can be used beyond Prospect Hill, though, because most of these plants grow in many of the parks in this area. So start your holiday shopping by buying your guide today. Only $20 on the Waltham Land Trust website. Free delivery to Waltham and neighboring towns. But don't wait too long. We have already sold two thirds of our inventory. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I know that um, those books have been flying off the shelves, literally. So definitely you can um, get one uh, online and Leslie will bring it to you. I also have a stash at the Waltham Land Trust office. So um, you can also connect with me and I can take a cash or check. Um, but we'll make it work because you definitely you want to have one of these books on your shelves and everyone that you know should get one because it's really awesome. Now we are going to hear from Brian McCormick, who is a part of our uh, financial committee, and he is going to talk to us about our financial results from last year. 
Thanks, Sonia. Um, I'm going to give a summary of our fiscal year 2021 results. Uh, the land trust fiscal year runs from July 1st through June 30th. So uh, the summary you're seeing is a result, uh, a summary of results through June 30th, 2021. In terms of our income, we had a, a, a pretty nice even distribution of income sources during the year. Um, Jarek referenced in his presentation that during COVID, we saw a real uptick of people using trails and uh, in the quarter that ended our fiscal year 2020, which is June 30th, 2020, uh, we received a real uptick in contributions and people signing up for memberships. They were really showing a real appreciation of the trails and being able to uh, recreate outdoors during the pandemic. And I'm pleased to say that we received, uh, we, we saw a continuation of that trend during fiscal year 21, our contributions increased by about 29% to $31,000 in fiscal 2021. And our membership income from membership dues increased 10% to uh, approximately $22,000. You can see there's a line item for other uh, elder income under revenue of about $19,000. About $8,000 of that is the proceeds from a first round PPP loan that we received um, of approximately $8,000. And I'll mention that the land trust also received a second round PPP loan also of $8,000. The forgiveness of that is pending. So we anticipate recognizing the income from that loan during fiscal year 2022. A new line item for us this year is income uh, from uh, at least, uh, Funds released from restrictions, 18950 And uh, a few years ago, the land trust received a, a good-sized grant of about $50,000. The funds from this grant were restricted to be used for uh, the design of a system for trail marking and kiosks throughout the Western Greenway. And we're pleased to report that the work on this project began in during fiscal year 21. So we were able to recognize a portion of the uh, revenue from that grant during the year. Uh, essentially, the restricted funds became unrestricted and we were able to use them towards the project. The offset for the, uh, the funds released from restrictions were recognized under program expenses. You can see uh, two lines down under expenses, program were 29,372. This is up from about $10,000 in fiscal year 20. Um, and the difference is essentially all captured in the cost to pay the consultants uh, for the design work on the kiosk and trail marking project. Our financial position speaks to our balance sheet. Uh, the bottom line there, net assets end of year. Net assets is the difference between the organization's assets less the organization's liabilities. And at June 30, 2021, our total assets were about $207,000, primarily in cash and money market accounts. Our total liabilities were about $12,000, and $8,000 of that was the PPP loan that we expect to be forgiven during this fiscal year. So the difference between the $207,000 of assets and the $12,000 of liabilities is our net assets of approximately $195,000. So we're um, a rather liquid and minimally leveraged organization. Before I close, I do uh, wanna reiterate something Sonia said at the beginning, and you'll hear later, um, the importance of Giving Tuesday. For us, uh, you can see the contributions represented um, about a quarter of our total income for the year. and um, we really appreciate the contributions we receive from our members and from others, and they're, they're vitally important. You can see all the good work we're doing in terms of all the projects that are going on. We have a lot more planned for this year and coming years, so we really look forward to your continuing support in this, in this area. Thank you. Thanks uh, very much, Brian. Uh, 
now let's get to, let me just get to the next slide. This thing is being a little sticky on me. There, business being Barbara, I will spotlight you. All right. All right, I, I should just start. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, so we are nominating uh, two people to return as trustees to the organization, to Waltham Land Trust. They are Nadine Stein and Dan Melnichuk. Um, and we are hoping, ah, there's Nadine, thank you. And, and do you have the picture of, ah, there's Dan. He couldn't be here tonight. He's at a CPC meeting um, and I believe uh, he has he, he has a lot of work there that he had to do. So um, we are nominating them. And do we have the voting um, thing up? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I don't see it on my thing. So okay, uh, well, uh, we this is only for members of the land trust. If you're a member, you can vote. And I'm about to launch a poll, which we've never done before. But hopefully, when you see it, you can uh, mark. Uh, whether or not, uh, hopefully you can see it. Can you see it yes, now? Yes, it, it is up there. So if you accept the slate for Nadine and Dan, um, please um, put your opinion in here. Yes, no, or abstain. Yeah, we're, I don't know if you can all see it, but we've got uh, a few people are voting. I'll tell you when the results are in. This is really a nail biter. <laughs> I've got one abstain and 36 of 37 uh, votes in favor. It's no longer seems to be uh, any more votes taking place. It looks and like- I, I, I uh, do see something from Sonia. Um, the the hosts and panelists can't vote in the poll. Right. Yes, no. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. I guess I don't. I th I don't think we changed the trend too much. What, I, yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the poll. And Barbara, I think you can announce the results. I think I can announce that we have uh, two returning. Uh, members to the board, um, Nadine and Dan, congratulations. All right. Let me just move to the next slide and go back to Sonia. Well, hello. And um, I'm back. Yes, but the slide doesn't want to move. Um, hold on. It's well, I'm thrilled that Nadine and Dan are going to be with us for another couple of years. And now three years. Forgive me, three years. Awesome. Okay, so two big things that we are have been focused on and are focused on again. Um, the first, of course, is the UMass Field Station acquisition. Um, so 240 Beaver Street is the field station property where the land trust has its office, where Waltham Fields Community Farm is housed. Um, let's see who else is there. A lot of great people, Grow Native Massachusetts, the Mass Farmers Markets, of course, the Grow Green Rows of Waltham, the community gardens are located in the fields. Um, and a lot of fantastic groups are sitting there at the field station. So I believe it was a year ago um, at our annual meeting when we made the announcement that the legislation had been sent to the governor's um, desk to sign. And this was the legislation allowing UMass to actually sell the property to the city of Waltham. And the governor, like a week or so after that, signed that. So we have been waiting for a year for the sale to actually happen. There were a variety of issues, and we believe most of them have been worked out. 
the um, UMass and the city of Waltham have both signed the purchase and sales agreement that happened a month or so ago. Um, we hear there's still one little issue that needs to be worked out. And when that is completed, then um, this will be sent to the Ways and Means Committee, the Massachusetts Ways and Means Committee. When it is sent to the Ways and Means Committee, that is when a closing date can be determined. And the closing date has to be, it has a full two weeks. So this, um, the transfer, the purchase and sales has to be in the committee for Ways and Means for 14 days and then the closing can happen. So we're waited with bated breath. Um, Stacy Daly, the ED of the farm and myself texted Representative John Lawn yesterday. Um, and we've been constantly talking to the UMass folks and others in city government, um, finding out when this is gonna go to the committee. And then once it's in the committee, then the closing date can be determined. So 14 days, has to pass before the closing date can be determined. So stay tuned. Uh, we will definitely let you all know as soon as we hear if it's when the closing date has been established. The Prospect Hill Road extension is something that has kind of just come up. Um, those of you who have been involved with the land trust for a while probably remember our battle to remove the illegal communications tower that was on actually this parcel. This is a five acre parcel that is located at zero Prospect Hill Road. The owners who have owned this parcel for a long time were in negotiations with the city of Waltham. There was interest from the city of Waltham to buy this five acre parcel, which is essentially, it's at the end of Dale Street and Willard. Um, in the Highlands neighborhood. And this parcel provides a huge, many, many accesses, access, many ways to access the Prospect Hill Park. Folks from the neighborhood and others um, get into Prospect Hill Park through trails coming through this parcel. And if the use of this parcel were to change, that would significantly alter the access points to Prospect Hill to the park. So of course the owner, this is, it's a private property owner and he, they can choose to do with it what they like. Um, it has been nice that it has been in open space forever. It's very steep. Um, it is unlikely, okay, is this where, uh, okay. We think it would be very hard for that parcel to be built um, built on. There have been rumors uh, in the past and currently that uh, there might be some development action happening there. Um, however, the owners maintain that they are interested in extending the road solely to provide frontage on that lot. They are interested in selling that parcel. They're interested in selling it to the city, but they are interested in getting a higher value. They're interested in getting as much money as possible, unfortunately, on that. And we, the land trust, feel that that's not right. And they do not need to extend that road because if they really want to sell the city, sell the property to the city, the city is not going to want to develop it. So um, we feel this is unnecessary. And in fact, if it is approved, if the Board of Survey and Planning, where the proposal is now, if they approve this, that is going to just be increasing the price of the parcel that the city will then have to pay. So it seems to me that the city would be shooting itself in the foot if they were to approve this petition. That is my opinion. The board has written its opinion, and I read that opinion into um, the record on October 6th, which was the first public hearing. The next, and we are told the final public hearing where people can come and weigh in and share their opinions will be on Wednesday, December 6th. Oh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, December 1st at 6 p.m. Um, and that will be in the uh, Government Center building and the auditorium of the Government Center, which is located at 119 School Street. The chair of the Board of Survey and Planning 
will ask if there are people who wish to speak in favor of the, pro of the project and against the project. So first he'll ask for people who wanna speak in favor of the project and then those who wanna stand in support of the project. Then he will ask people wanting to speak in opposition to approach the lectern and to provide their name and to give their comments. A lot of comments have been shared. Um, many from the neighborhood have expressed their concern and the desire to keep access open and available into the park has definitely been expressed. So um, we're not, the land trust isn't necessarily encouraging people to go and speak because um, we want this to move forward, but we definitely want people to stand when the chair asks if there are people who would like to stand in opposition to this petition. So please, please, please join us on December 1st. It's a Wednesday, 6 p.m. in the auditorium of the Government Center that's located at 119 School Street and stand in opposition when the chair asks if there are people opposed to this petition. I will send an email reminding folks about that, but put it on your calendars now, please. Thank you. And I guess I'll ask, what questions do we have? And um, I see that there are some in the Q&A. Yeah, uh, there yeah. are. Um, I was just going to ask everyone to, uh, in, from the board to um, uh, show their video again. And I'll, I can give you the question, Nadine, if you would like to uh, pick the person to respond. Um, we've got two questions right okay. now. No pressure there. Yeah, well, I think the I think you can figure this one out pretty okay. well. But I'll give you the second one. When will the Greenway Trail extend through Bentley and the Lyman Estate to the rail trail? Well, that's a question for Mark, I think, right? Yes, I believe. Mark, are you here? Let me find him. I am here. Thank you. Uh, um. So uh, we've had long negotiations uh, with both uh, Bentley University and the historic New England that owns the Lyman Estate. Uh, I'm happy to say we have uh, achieved a trail easement with Bentley University, um, have laid out a trail route there uh, and are waiting uh, to get uh, some finalization of our efforts with Historic New England uh, before we start trail work on both of these very short segments that connect uh, the end of the seven miles uh, that have been um, accomplished already uh, and the Mass Central Rail Trail. Uh, so these are two essential pieces to make that connection. We are in current uh, discussion with uh, Historic New England, so I really uh, don't feel uh, at liberty to talk about the specifics of that, um, but we are certainly hoping to um, uh, reach an agreement with them that would allow the trail to go across their property and then develop both the uh, the Bentley and the Lyman Estate portions, hopefully in time for the opening of the Mass Central Rail Trail. So it's fair to say, Mark, that we were nothing is stalled. We're moving forward at, at different at different speeds. We are moving forward at unusually slow speeds, but uh, progress is being made. Awesome. The other question was about the Mass. Uh, the Mass. Uh, I'm, Mass Central, Central Rail Trail. Trail. Thank you, the Mass Central Rail Trail. So, thank you. Um, okay. I will say that, um, yeah, we continue to ask um, Planning Director Catherine Cagle as well as Mayor McCarthy about this. Um, we get requests, I'd say every other week, um, I get someone emailing me asking about this. So what we've been told is Park Corporation, who is the engineering design firm who's developing the designs um, of the like the um, the rail the cross the road crossings, um, in addition to the design of the path itself, they are they need to be to like ninety percent, and then the uh, proposal will be released so that companies can bid on how much they think it will cost to remove 
the rails and the timber and then to hold community meetings and then do the other kind of finishing up finishing touches on the design work before then they can construct the um the new the new pathway so we're still waiting on that unfortunately but i'd like to think i'm always the optimist as well that uh they will go out to bid in in on the winter so that construction can begin in the spring. I think that's kind of everyone's hope always, um, including the cities. Uh, I think they just were kind of caught up with the COVID thing and some other issues. But um, but I know everyone wants to move this project forward. So we will be as best we can. I think that's it for questions at the moment, because the one from Bob, it, um, Sonia just answered. Well, Sonia, um, Dee is asking if that's Hootie behind you there. Of and course. I'm wondering how old Hootie is. Do you know well, how old Hootie is? I'm not sure how old Hootie is. I know, Nadine, our original Hootie came from you, came from the Plimpton Elementary um, School, right? The Northeast Elementary School. Uh, I'm sorry, Northeast. I'm sorry, I meant Northeast. Yeah. And I, I inherited it from someone else. So Hootie is very wise and probably very, very old also. And there are three Hooties. Um, this is the one who stays with me and sometimes he's in my car um, going with me to events. Um, and we also have two at the office. Uh, so Hootie hopes that you will participate in the year end Giving Tuesday fundraiser event that is on November 30th and all the way up until January 1st. And Hootie always feels better when they're full of money. Yes, yes. He doesn't want a, a tummy growling of hunger. No, it's not, it's not a good look for him. Yeah. Um, anything else? That's all the questions that are in there. Okay. Sonia, do you want to just review any upcoming events that we have one more time before we wish everybody a good night? Absolutely. So um, our, our big event, our next thing is, is Giving Tuesday. That's November 30th. Um, and then on the Friday after that, December 3rd, our wonderful Vice President Barbara Jacobs is going to lead a walk in the Middlesex County Hospital lands. This is the property that's just north of Trapello. So those of us, um, or those of you know, those of us who were on the Chesterbrook walk, walk that um, that we just did last week, basically we'll be continuing that walk north of Trapello. So folks will be going through the Middlesex property, the Middlesex hospital lands, and then heading towards the Beaverbrook North property. I know Barbara wants to go by the Wellington House and look at the new trail connections that are near there. Um, and back. So that though you must register for. Uh, it's not on our website yet. It will be shortly. And um, we definitely, we want to limit the number of people because the trails are pretty narrow in there. And Barbara wants to have a nice intimate group. This day, December 14th, will be um, a fundraiser at the Bistro 781. Uh, on Moody Street. And if you get a certificate from our website or they're littered around town, um, get to them on some fort. So please do uh, go to Bistro 781 and thank them for us uh, because they were our sponsor for the Western Greenway 5K, which by the way, was a huge success. And thanks to all of you who came and many of you, I think, maybe registered and didn't come. And we really super duper thank you for supporting our mission by making that donation. Um, so yeah, Bistro 781, December, December 14th. And, uh, and that's it for our events for this year. Thank you, Sonia. I, sure. <laughs> So am I the signer offer or a sign? Yes, you, you are. Oh, all right, cool. Well, I just went through and looked at all the participants. It's really nice to see you guys, at least see your names. We're hoping that next year we can see you in person, but we're glad that you're here. We um, appreciate your attention on, on the pretty cool topics that we had tonight. And we hope that you have a safe holiday season. And thank you all very much for coming this evening.
Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.